Now it's time for the second guest on tonight's show, and I am, well, you guys know I'm very excited. At the start of the show, I was like a little hyperactive boy, excited about my next guest. Um, what an amazing year this lady's had, and her band have had indeed. Um, one of the biggest selling kind of bands from the 90s to the 2000s. Um, I'm so excited to get her on. It's Lindsay Armel. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Now, I'm, do you know, I love having you on the show because you set, you made my trend amazing, which is double denim. Woohoo! You pulled that look <laughs> off like no one else. It was amazing. Do you wear it? Yeah, I, I, I love double denim. Oh, I'm in double good. denim now. Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, double denim was our thing. It's amazing, actually, how people really remember us for that, as well as our music, but that as well, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, Bewitched, I mean, one of the biggest girl bands ever, but the most unique because you guys had... So I'm not, now, this, this is going to come out wrong, but you guys had personality, and I know a lot of other girl bands do, but you, got, you girls in particular did. Um, you were very fun, very energetic. <laughs> now, first of all, I've got to say, what, what a year you guys have had. You, you started ITV2's Big Reunion. Yeah. Um, did you guys ever expect that show to become such a success like it did? I mean... Oh, who would have thought? I mean, to be honest, when, I, when um, ITV2 approached us about it, I did think, okay, this, this sounds like a really good idea. And I did think that it would be successful. I mean, you've got six or seven, you know, bands that had a lot of success in the 90s. And it was a first look into what went on behind the scenes. And of course, that's going to be interesting. So I knew that it would be... A success, but I didn't really know that it would be as huge a success as it was because obviously then we went on to do a Sella Arena tour up and down the country, and then we've added more dates which we're doing in December. So it's just yeah, it's just kind of gone beyond what I expected. But when you were kind of approached to 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 come back into Bewitched, was that something you were instantly wanting to do, or did it take you time to think about it? Because I can imagine it's such a big thing because as we saw on the show. There, there was kind of history back there, and it wasn't as easy as it, you know, as it looked. Cause yeah, I mean, I, I knew instantly that it was something that I wanted to do, but I also knew equally that it was going to be a challenge, and that it wasn't going to be, you know, we we would have to go on a journey to get to a point where we were a band again. And I knew that that I knew that's what would be required. So I tentatively knew that I wanted to do it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought it was something that if if we didn't do, I, you know, that we'd regret. So I'm really glad we did it, and and in hindsight, I'm really glad that we had to go on that emotional journey as as friends and as four individual members because we've come such a long way. And if nothing else, um, our friendships are stronger than ever uh, because we've had to kind of just you know just air things and just talk about things and. The best thing that you can do for any friendship or relationship is get it out there, communicate, say how you feel. You know, once it's out there, it's gone. Yeah. You know, so we've, and we're, you know, we're getting on so well now. We're really enjoying being in each other's company. We're enjoying working together. It's really great. Now, obviously, like you said then, um, when you were on the big reunion, your your kind of, your personal lives and some of the past kind of arguments that you as a band may have had, it was aired in front of the nation. Now, did you find that tough? Because I can imagine now with like Twitter and stuff like that, you must have had so many people kind of getting involved, tweeting and stuff like that about your personal life. How did you, how, yeah. how did you find that? I found that the hardest part, actually. Yeah. Um, because, well, when I signed up to do it, I knew that I would have to, if you like, bear my soul with regards to the band and what happened within the band. But I wasn't prepared for the attention that I'd have on, on my personal life. I, I guess so and I, I kind of made a decision very early on that I wouldn't speak about it because in my mind it was two separate things and you know the re you know my marriage breakup and everything like yeah. that wasn't anything to do with the big reunion as far as I was concerned it was a separate issue so uh, you know it was it was very hard for me not to talk about it because I did get you know get asked about it all the time um, and so I I just I dealt with it the best way I could and it was a tricky situation you know there's no easy way to deal with something like that um Lee did speak about it more and you know that kind of made it more apparent that I didn't talk about it and yeah whatever way it came across I don't know but at the end of the day the only reason I didn't talk about it is purely because I wanted to keep it private and separate 
Like, 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 it, it was definitely a challenge to do that. It really was. Because, like, this obviously the show's about a band kind of getting back together. It, it, the, your personal relationship with Lee didn't kind of, even though you, you were both on the same show, it didn't really yeah. need to be to be asked that to you because it's your exactly, private life. That was my that was my thoughts, but you know, I, well, anyway, it's it, it was what it was. But but yeah, it definitely was a challenge and something that I wasn't used to. Um, I guess back in the day, we didn't really have reality TV. You know, in the nineties. Exactly. So the reality side of things is a very new thing to us. Very new. Um, you know, back then it was all about the finished version of the well-rehearsed routines and the polished, glamorous product, you know. It wasn't about behind the scenes. That's not what people were interested in. Whereas now, it's it's more about behind the scenes than it is on stage. <laughs> so it's it's just very different, you know, and just something to get used to, I guess. If we go back to where it all started... Um how first of all how did you guys get together how did bewitched become bewitched i mean did you have to audition or were you approached to be in the band how how did it all work and um, well i was actually the fourth person to join so the other three girls had already joined had already created a girl band because we didn't get put together by a management company we actually put ourselves together wow so the three girls had had met and decided they wanted to be a girl group and they were looking for a fourth member and we all used to go to this uh, dance Centre, a bit like Pineapple, but the equivalent in Ireland, <laughs> called Diggs Lane Dance Centre. And we all used to go there. We kind of knew each other to say hello to and, and everything. And then one day a mutual friend introduced me to the girls and said, sort of said in their ear, you know, I think she'd be good as their, as your fourth member. And they thought, oh yeah, well let's, let's meet her and everything else. And I think they spied on me on one day in a, in a dance class to see if I could dance. Um, I didn't know about this till years later, <laughs> and then I, and then we met up, and um, I played them a song that I'd written, and and then they just said, okay, so do you want to be in our band? And you know, and I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> and the rest is history. Just, that was it. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, obviously, you know, you guys had a lot of UK number one hits. Um, four, in fact. Now. Obviously, your your big hit, and I imagine everywhere you go, people do sing it to you. Um, Say la vie, number yeah. one hit. Tell me, can you remember where you were or what you'd done when you found out you were number one in the UK? Um, well, I remember fi what sticks out in my mind is finding out the midweek chart position because um, on a Wednesday you find out how your how your single is doing. And I remember that we were in our producer's um, studio that day recording probably roller coaster or something and we were in the in the studio and i remember him taking a call and we were all looking at his face because we knew that, that the call was the midweek chart position and he didn't give anything away his he was poker faced um and then he said yes okay thank you and then he put the phone down and then he looked at us and we were like and what what is it <laughs> and he went it's number one! <laughs> so you can imagine, you know, the oh. screams and the crying and everything else. But yeah, that really sticks out of my mind. And then obviously on the sun on that Sunday, we found out officially that it was number one. I think we were on stage somewhere. I don't remember where, but um, they announced it when we were on stage. So that was nice. I mean, that success just, you know, it kept coming, like you said, with Roller Coaster and uh, Blame It On A Weatherman and all the other hits that, that went to number one. Now, did, yeah. you, uh, did you ever expect when, when, the, when the group was together and you started off in music that you would ever have the success that you had, selling over three million albums? No, and to be honest, now that you're saying it, I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it because we really didn't. We got together as a girl, we thought, we just want to do what we love doing, singing, dancing, performing, writing songs. We just got in, we did it. Um, thankfully, we were, uh, I don't know if you want to call it luck or right place at the right time, or a combination of that plus the fact that we were hardworking and very driven. Um, and thankfully, we got the, opp the opportunities and we got a record deal. And, you know, we, we got in with a really good producer. We created nice pop music and it was successful. And it, and it you know, it really was. We also went over to the States and we broke the States, which is you know, quite an unusual thing. So yeah. it really did just totally blow up and it's amazing to think about it now. You know, I look back and go, gosh, we achieved so much in such a short space of time. It was amazing. And I mean, it, you know, you had all the success, but then kind of all of a sudden, um, in a kind of late, in the early kind of 2000s, um, the, the, the band, you know, it, was, it dropped from a record label. Now, 
how was that? Because that must have been such a down time for you to be living on this high, then all of a sudden, at a click of a finger, it just drops. Yeah, it was it was definitely hard to deal with. I think um, it was it, yeah, it was it was Tough. it was kind of an overnight sort of huge U turn in in our lives. Um, and the record company just decided the, the, a new MD came on board at the record company basically, and he decided he wanted to sign more playing bands um, and get rid of a lot of the old acts. Which, in hindsight, I mean, was a huge mistake, if I do say so myself, because we were a platinum-selling yeah. artist at the time. And you just don't do that. You just drop a, a band that are selling that amount of records, you know. I mean, it definitely wouldn't be done today in this industry. Um, so, you know, in hindsight, it's, it's just a shame that it happened. But um, but it did. And and so, yeah, I guess we just kind of had to try and, and figure out what, it, what else we wanted to do in our lives after that. And I mean, obviously, what everyone loved was Bewitch was such a fun, energetic, really cool, and just the most genuine group of girls. And I think that's what people kind of bought into as Aww. well. But would you say that maybe some of the kind of management or the people behind you, um, as the later you went on, tried to change that and make you a little bit something that you, you weren't as such, kind of changing yeah. what people loved? Definitely. I think for the second... I mean, I mean, I'd say that we were partly responsible for that as well. I think... For the second album, we wanted to grow up a little bit. We were, we were sort of early twenties, and we'd kind of come out of that adolescent phase, and we didn't want to be. We wanted to be a little bit more sexy, a little bit more feminine, and and I think we made it was probably the wrong thing to do because it's not what we were about, and it kind of it kind of changed our direction probably too much in hindsight. But um, but yeah, so we probably shouldn't have done it in hindsight. But there you go. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, 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 the thing, another thing was, at, at, when the time you were kind of dropped, there were a lot of new bands coming forward, like Girls Allowed, Liberty X, and, and Hearsay, and people like that. So it was so good when the big reunion came, because everybody realised how fun Bewitch were, and we've kind of, Aww. we've we've brought back into that now, and people are wanting to see you at arena tours, people are wanting to hear you, your music again, and indeed getting your album back in the UK Top 10 um, Country Music Chart. Now, so that kind of, for you, must be quite overwhelming to realise people's love has just come straight back for the band and is, yeah. you know, you're, you're doing what you love doing again. Yeah, absolutely. It is overwhelming. And, you know, people people really do want to see us again. <laughs> you know, it's quite, as you say, it is overwhelming. And and we went on tour, the, the reactions from the audience, they were so warm and they were so up for a good time and I think that the 90s were such a great time for you know, pop music it was a great era of pop music and people miss that and and we're kind of bringing it back I suppose for however long they want it but yeah it's it is overwhelming the response that we've had for sure and like you said you've got a lot of upcoming projects coming up um, be, um, Christmas you said you're going to be doing some dates at Christmas yep we're doing we've had dates put in for December so I think we're doing seven dates um, in December. So that's well, really looking forward to that. Christmas time, it's going to be great. It'll be fun. It's going to you're going to have yeah. that kind of the atmosphere and the the energy. Um, what 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 about now? What kind of stuff are you you working on now? Is there any other upcoming projects that you can tell us uh, a bit about um, today? Well, we've I mean, as a band, we've we've been doing gigs over the summer. We've been doing um, festivals and things over the summer. Um, so that's been good fun, and um, yeah, we've we've just got a, a couple of things booked in the diary between now and December. We've got photo shoots and things, and uh, me personally, I um, I've got an audition on book actually for a film, and I've also got a, a film that I that I did uh, about a year and a half ago. It's supposed to be coming out at the end of the year, fingers crossed. So yes, Aww. I'm doing I'm doing more I'm doing sort of acting in more recent years. I went and trained um, as an actress. So that's kind of what I've been pursuing for the last couple of years, and I absolutely love it. So I hope to do more of that. Well, as I said, yeah, I mean, what everybody loved about you girls was you're so honest, so genuine. Um, you, you don't come across like egotistical in any way. Aww. So sweet and lovely. And I'm so glad that things are, you know, back on the right track because, like, that must be such a cruel. I know it's a cruel industry, but a cruel thing to be on a high to be dropped. Yeah. So it's so it's so good that you're coming back better than ever. 
still oh, rocking out I, the double denim. <laughs> I know. I couldn't. Oh, we could not bring back the double denim. That's part of the witch, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, but, like I said, I hope the success continues. This year it was amazing seeing you all on the show, so happy and so kind of family orientated you and the other yeah. girls so close oh, so thank you so much it's so nice to, to think that we were you know we're remembered in that way that's lovely thank you definitely you got me into my little my my dance routine i danced to say la vie and my mum and dad kind of look <laughs> at me and think oh my god what what happened to you <laughs> <laughs> so that's no brilliant oh. well it's lovely talking to you and wish you all the thank best you. and good luck with your audition thank you so much thanks for having me and come back on and let us know how you do will do thank Bye. you very much take care Bye. Bye.